thankful for our worship team. So the drums just died this morning, and everybody huddled together, was taking things apart. Nobody was griping or complaining, saying they were leaving the church, not coming back no more because the drums died. They went out somewhere and found some kind of box with a hole in it, and he got back there and made it sound like a full drum set. So this is a little bit before my time, but many of you will remember watching The Lone Ranger and Tonto. How many of you remember that? Woo, lots of you folks in Lone Ranger. You'll like this. So The Lone Ranger and Tonto were out in the field. They were on the plane. Started to get late, so they set up their tent. They laid down for the evening. Early, early, early in the morning, the Lone Ranger woke up and he nudged up Tonto. He said, Tonto, what do you see? He see many stars, Kimo Sabi. And he says, Tonto, what does that say to you? Tonto said, astronomically it tells me <laughs> millions of stars, millions of galaxies. Chronologically, it tells me it is 3 a.m. <laughs> Theologically, it tells me God is the great creator and we are but nothing. What stars tell you, Himosaki? Tonto, as I look at these stars, what I see so clearly is that somebody have stole our tent. <laughs> Do you see what I see? It's strange how two people can look at the exact same situation. They see something totally different. Right? We know that. So for the month of December, we're unwrapping the Christmas story. This is familiar. We've heard these things before. We know about angels. We know about shepherds. We know about rangers and wise men or kings or kings. But we want to see that there's more than just those elements. All those are important. All those have their place. But there's other things that we need to see as well. If you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2 as we continue. We're going to look at verses 15 through 21 today. What did we see? Three things that the shepherd did <clears throat> that we should also do so that maybe we can see what they saw. First we see that the shepherds, they sought the Savior. So if you missed last week, let me review where we were at. Last week in our series, we saw that the shepherds were in the field. Their cares for the flocks by day and by night. All of a sudden, an angel appears. How did they react? We're not really sure. Did they stand still? Did they freeze in fear? Did they try to run and hide? It just says that the angel appeared and the glory of God showed down upon them, which means the light that surrounds the glory of God, whoosh, literally fell upon them. Overwhelming, certain. Then it says the angel tells them, I have a good news for you, a great message. That tonight salvation is going to be born. And then all of a sudden there was a host of angels in the sky. And they were proclaiming and they were singing and they were worshiping. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth with whom he is well pleased. Today we kind of see part two. So last week we saw three surprises. We saw the angel, we saw the announcement, and then we saw the amplification with all the angels in the sky. And then we're just kind of left with the shepherds standing there in the field like, okay... Well, what happens next? And that's where we start today. Luke chapter 2, verse 15. <clears throat> when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Now, one of the things that we do not know is how long all of this took. Okay, so we know the shepherds are out in the field. We got that. We know the angel appears. 
How long did the angel appear and shine before it spoke? I don't know. Could have been a second. Could have been a minute. Could have been ten minutes. Doesn't really tell us. Then the angel speaks. That shouldn't have taken very long. And then the angels show up and they start singing and praising. How long? You know, was this like a, a three-verse hymn? You know, it was just a chorus that went on and on and on? Doesn't really say, but just know that it happened. And the shepherds are left there as the angels go into heaven. How long did that take? I don't know. We just know that when it was over with, the shepherds kind of lose each other. And one of them says, we got to go. We got to go right now. And they took off. And it says they went with haste. That means that they let nothing hinder them from getting to where Jesus was. That means they got there as fast as they possibly could. So this is what that image would look like. When we got to go to the one day with God prison ministry, there's a special time during the day when the kids stand on one side and their dads walk in for the first time and they see each other and they get to run to each other. The children and the father run to each other with haste. Okay? There's nothing that's going to stop them from connecting. Running with haste is the shopper on Black Friday who is first in line, right, down at the Dollar Gentral, who's going to get that 50-inch LED TV that costs $999, and it's on sale for $0.99, cents, and there's one in the state of Texas, and they've got their eye on it. Nothing's going to stop them. Yesterday, we, Mrs. Sister Judy had the Happy Birthday Jesus Party. Millions of kids here. It's fantastic. They're all over the place. So they had all these pieces of cake, right? So I had my eye on a piece of cake because they just kept going and being distributed. And I knew that I really needed a corner piece with lots of blessings on it. So I had my eye on the cake. And in the back of my mind, I heard like some rocky music going on. I had the eye of the tiger. Nothing's going to stop me. And I made with haste to the piece of cake. And I claimed victory. Nothing was going to stop the shepherds from getting there. Why were they in such a hurry? And why did they want to be there? Well, it's probably because they doubted that any of this was true. Right? It's all a hoax. They wanted to go and see, can this actually be real? No, I don't think so. They wanted to go and they wanted to see what salvation looked like. They wanted to see the Son of God. They knew it was true, and they wanted to see it with their own eyes. Not only did they rush there, not only did they accelerate with excitement and determination, but when they got there, they actually found baby Jesus. Well, that shouldn't have been so hard, because there was only one cave in all of Bethlehem. Yeah, right. Well, there wasn't anybody in town. It was empty. All they had to look for a candle, and that's it. It was a census. There was thousands and thousands and thousands of people everywhere. Well, the angel lit up a yellow brick road straight to Jesus. <laughs> Maybe in that cartoon, but not in the Bible. Let me say that. How can they find me? But he led by the Spirit. He led him straight there. The shepherds went, and they found the same. Preacher, I'm, I'm going back to last week. right? I'm with you. I understand. I've heard this before. Shepherds, angel, angels, run, find the baby. I wasn't there. I was not at the manger. What on earth could this possibly have to do with me and my life right here today, almost 2016? in Laverna, A, Texas. Two lessons. Number one, don't linger. Don't linger. Right. What we see from the shepherds, they went immediately. There's not a person in here that walks with the Lord that cannot tell me that you have inspiration, encouragement, or conviction, or spurrings by the Spirit of God and there are times that you don't just kind of sit there and do nothing when you know you should move. It happens to us all. 
walking through the grocery store. You see some lady over there, and she's looking for something. And the Spirit says, you need to go and help her or talk to her right now. And we go. Now, God, we need to talk about this right now. Because I don't know that lady. She might not want my help. She probably has pepper spray. It's going to spray me in the face. And I am not going over there. This cannot be a good idea. And the whole time he's going, go, 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 go. And we're saying, no, 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 no. I think the thing we learn from the shepherds is immediate obedience is what God calls us to. That doesn't mean that we're hasty. It doesn't mean that we are careless. It just means that when we know we're hearing from God, that we move. And when God says help, we help. When God says listen, we listen. When God says walk, we walk. When God says speak, we speak. And we don't linger. And the reason why is because our God has a perfect plan. And in that perfect plan, there's perfect <coughs> timing. And if it is God orchestrated for us to be at that place, at that time, with that person, in that situation, with our frame of mind and our experience and where we are at, it's not by accident. Right. And what if that is the only opportunity we will ever have to fulfill that particular part of God's plan is right there when He speaks. And if we say no, we messed it up. Well, I don't want that on me. Don't linger. When God says stop, stop. God says help, help. There's going to be obstacles that are going to get in the way. Sometimes it might be your family, it might be your friends, it might be work, it might be yourself, it might be evil forces that break down drums. There ain't no telling what it is, but we don't stop. We couldn't stop the shepherds. You were going to stop me from getting to my piece of corner cake. You're going to stop like Friday shoppers. Don't stop when God tells you to move. Number two, when you run to the Savior, you always find exactly what you need. Right. There's a lot of places that we run. We run away. We run to work. We run to the internet. We run to a hobby. We run to a safe place. You can run a lot of places in this life, but you're never going to find what you're looking for until you run to Jesus. Yeah. But every time you run to Him, you find exactly what you need. Hey, that's good news. So number one, woo, seek the Savior. Number two, they embraced the evidence. I found some pictures this week, and I love memes, right? Little pictures that have words and writing on them that give you a little attention. So I found these this week about some pets. We love boxer dogs. So it says, oh, thank God you are home. Somebody broke in and ate your rotisserie chicken. Again. Again. And then they are standing there, right, and the trash is all over the ground. Can you believe it? Somebody broke in and they ate it. We sat here and we tried to stop them, but we couldn't do it. Go to the next one. Oh, I'm so glad you're home. The Christmas tree faded. There I was, just sitting here being a good dog, and the tree just fell over. I am so glad you're here to save me. One more. I don't know. I was just sleeping. See, that's a dog hiding in the smallest couch and pillow all over it. It's like the image of the child that has chocolate all over their face. And the mom's going, did you eat the cookies on the counter? And they're going, what's me? What's me? And they're covered in chocolate. Sometimes we just need to embrace the evidence, okay? The dogs ate the chicken. The dog knocked over the Christmas tree. This dog tore up the couch and the pillows. The evidence is all over the place. Sometimes we just need to see it, and we need to believe. Sometimes in this life, we need proof. Okay, Wednesday night, we had a proof-needing situation. I was walking out to my car, saw some money laying on the ground. Okay, $60. I thought I'd have won the lottery. I was excited. And then the Spirit told me I couldn't keep it, so I was bringing it back inside. As I walk inside, one of the youth outside goes, Hey, that's my money. And I was thinking, Sure, it's your money. About as much as it's my money, you scallywag. So I was like, All right. So I got the money in my pocket, and I said, Well, how much money is it? 60 bucks. Ah, oh, lucky guess, right? We must have seen me out there. Uh, OK, 
okay, well, how's the money divided up? You know, is it five tens and two fives? You know, is it two twenties and four fives? It's three twenty dollar bills. Mm, lucky guess number two. <laughs> it's okay. There's no way this kid has sixty dollars unless he's selling drugs in the parking lot. There's no way. <laughs> So I say, we're going to go find Pastor Randy. So we go back and say, Randy, you know this kid? And he's not one of our regular kids. He's just kind of outside. I said, oh, I kind of, I don't really know. I said, well, here's our situation. He says that this is his $60. And I'm thinking there's no way it's his $60. So we got to have some kind of proof here. And the kid's going, really, man? That's my money. It's my money. And I'm thinking, no, it is not your money. <laughs> Where'd you get the money from? My mom gave it to me. Sure, your mom gave it to you. So Pastor Randy comes up with this great plan, right? <coughs> Let's just call his mom. Brilliant! Excellent idea. What's your mom's phone number? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> sure, you don't know your mom's phone number. Oh, he starts looking on his phone. Okay, here, I got it here. So we start calling his mom and goes, but I just need you to know, my mom doesn't speak English. She only speaks Spanish. Sure. So your mom, she don't know her phone number. Also doesn't speak English. And so God ordained in that moment Sister Judy was there. And guess who speaks a little Spanish? <laughs> Sister Judy. And I was like, we are fixing to nail this punk. I am calling the police. <laughs> so Judy gets on the phone. You know, she's, like, blah, 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 blah. she's talking to her in Spanish. And she comes back and she says, it's really his money. The mom said so. I'm like, no way. And so then his brother gets on the phone. He speaks English. He says, listen, our mom gives us $60. To put on our food account, that's really his money. Man, I really wanted him to not be telling the truth. But he did. Okay, we had proof. Here's proof. His mom told us on the phone in Spanish. His brother told us in English. He identified the amount. We had all the proof that we needed. And so we gave him his money. I didn't really want him to be lying. I wanted to believe him, but I just didn't know. But then I had proof. Isn't that true? So many times we want to believe something. But we say, I just need some proof. Maybe the shepherds wanted to believe in the coming Messiah. They really wanted to believe salvation was going to be here, but they didn't have any proof. And then all of a sudden, here comes an angel. And then we see the light of God's glory. And then we see a whole bunch of angels. And then we see they go to the manger, and exactly what was supposed to be there was there. A baby wrapped up in those cloths, lying in a manger. They had all the proof that they needed. What did they do next? Verse 17. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning the child. And all who heard it, they wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. So many times, say, man, I just need some proof. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe you say, I don't really want to believe in this God you're talking about. I want to believe that Christmas story. I just need some proof. Let me tell you today, the proof is out there. You need proof that the Bible's true? Go home and do a Google search, okay? There's plenty of proof that Scripture is real. There's plenty of proof that Jesus walked this earth, died on a cross, and rose again. The proof is out there. But listen, I can prove to you all day long that it's true. But you still got to believe. Right. Toby Max sings a song and says, Listen, people say, I just can't see God. If I can see God, then I can believe. And Toby Max says, Well, you know, you can't see the wind, but you can feel the wind, and you can see the effects of the wind. We may not be able to see God. He may not physically walk through here, Ooh, but I can feel God, and I can see the effects of God working in this life. The proof is there, and they were overcome. And it says that the moment that they saw how real this was, this was actually happening, they began to tell other people. And the people wondered, wow, can this really be? I want to encourage you today that we can't save people from their sins. Right. You and I can't do that. And we can't make other people believe that Jesus is real. But we can sure plant seeds of the gospel. And we can sure make people wonder. They saw the truth and they told the world.
it says, and there was Mary, and she pondered all these things in her heart. See, that's the way God's plan works, is that we, we see the truth, and we believe the truth, and then we share the truth. Right. And after we've done that, we can step back and look and say, I can't believe how God brought me from where I was to where I am now. And we ponder those things in our heart and say, Lord, in all of your plan and all of your majesty, how amazing it is that you brought me right here to this place so that I can share with this person and with that person. Lord, how amazing it is that you are using me this way and you're using me that way. And you orchestrated all these things before time even began. Right. Beautiful. We look at the shepherds. We see they saw the Savior. They embraced the evidence. Number three, they experienced the effect. Verse 20. And the shepherds, they returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, <coughs> as it had been told to them. And at the end of the eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel, before he was conceived in the womb. Praising and glorifying God. The words used here, the same words used for when the 72 returned. So God sent out, Jesus sent out 72 to go and minister. And they came back and they said, you're never going to believe all the things that we saw. All the things that we can do. Even the demons listened to us because of the power that you bestowed upon us. And they were excited. And they were praising and glorifying God. And that's what happens when the shepherds see the same. It says they went back and man, they were excited. So let me think about this process here. What I'm hearing is that the shepherds were given some good news by God. Check. They found out it was true. Check. They told other people about it. Check. And then they praised God for His goodness. Check. <coughs> What's that got to do with me? Everything. Right. Absolutely everything. Because that pattern hasn't changed since that day. You still hear the good news. You can still check it out and find that it is absolutely true. And if it's a good news worth keeping, then it's a good news worth sharing. And then when you share it, you praise God for His goodness. Yeah. That's a change. It says, and then He was circumcised and given the name Jesus. Yahweh. Salvation is here. Right. There's not a single part of this story that God didn't think out and plan out. The angels, the shepherds, Mary, Joseph, every single part was perfectly planned. We just have to believe that it was. Some people can look at it and say, well, that was fortunate that all those events worked out the way they did. Or you can look at it and say, wow. Look at how amazing God is that he put all those things together and they happened just as it was prophesied. There was a shoe company that sent two salesmen out into the Congo. They say, what is the possibility that we can sell shoes out there in the Congo? <coughs> the first one writes back and says, there is no hope to sell shoes in this place. Not a single person has a pair of shoes. The other one sent a message back that says, this place is a gold we have every opportunity you can ever imagine because not a single person here has shoes. All depends on how you look at it. Maybe what you need to hear today <coughs> is that God has a great plan for your life. And you look at the events of the shepherds and of the angels, Mary, <coughs> Joseph, you can see all these things that they walk through in their life. I'm sure there were times they were confused. There were times they were scared. But that's exactly where you're at today. You say, I'm walking through a lot of things in my life, and I don't know why. I don't know why I'm here or what the reason is that God has brought me to this place. If that's you, maybe today you just need to do what the shepherds did. You just need to seek a Savior. Because when you run to Jesus, you're going to find out exactly what you need to find. Maybe you just need to embrace the evidence 
that God tells us that no matter what we walk through, He's right there beside <coughs> us. And He loves us through it. And then maybe you can just experience the effect. Because there is no greater gift than unwrapping the gift of God's great love. Yeah. Lord, today, this is our heart's pride. This is our plea. Lord, that perhaps we can see what the shepherds saw. Lord, perhaps we can do what the shepherds did. Lord, there are people in this room who are running. Lord, perhaps they are running away from their problems and their troubles. Perhaps they are running to addictions or excuses or just trying to avoid. God, today I pray that today hearts will be convicted that if we run anywhere except to you, we are always going to be lost. But when we run to you, Lord, you will always find us. Lord, today, maybe we just need to embrace the evidence of our life that we've heard the good news and we've seen the Savior. Lord, we know He's real. We've felt Him. We haven't told anybody else about this good news. Maybe we can embrace the evidence of our life that we have not been the disciples you've called us to be. But we haven't done it as the shepherds. We have gone and told the world about your great love. Lord, today we need to embrace the evidence that maybe we have fallen from a place where we need to be in walking with Embrace the evidence that we don't really know you. But one of the hardest questions that we need to ask ourselves is Do I really love Jesus? Is my relationship with him real? Have I truly given him my life? Because God, if all that we have is showing up in this place once a week, never told another person about your great love, then we need to ask the question, have we ever really felt your great love? Because if we have, then we will glorify and we will praise you. And we will spread that word to every person that we come in contact with. Lord, if there's a heart here today that questions and that wonders that it asks, is my salvation secure? Is the relationship real? God, help them to run to you today. God, I pray that we be challenged in this place. That a relationship with you is an experience. Lord, what a gift that we have to be able to live with your Holy Spirit within us. Lord, perhaps there's some here today that are simply living life day to day, week to week, going through the motions, but they are not enjoying the experience of a lifetime by seeking and serving you. God, show us today how we can be a people who have accepted and cherished your inexpressible gift. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Today I'm going to embrace the evidence in my life of this decision. I need to 